Hello, hey. Welcome back. In today's video, I'll show you how to add sessions to our application using the Gorilla Sessions package. If you aren't familiar with sessions, they're basically a way of keeping some information or state between HTTP requests. A session holds information associated with a particular visitor. A good example of when you might want to use a session is to keep track of whether or not a visitor is logged in and who they're logged in as. Our first step is to install the sessions package. So open up your terminal and type go get github.com slash gorilla slash sessions. And now it's installed. Now we need to import the sessions package into our application. We'll go back to our editor and add this line to our import section. Now we create an object to configure how our sessions are stored. There are multiple ways you can keep session data, but we'll be using cookies in this video. You'll notice I'm passing in this top secret byte array to the cookie store. This actually requires a bit of explanation. The byte array we're passing here is being used as a key to sign our cookies. What this means is that any data we store in our sessions will be signed using this secret key. The Gorilla Sessions package will ensure that our application only accepts cookies which were signed with our key. You may be wondering why we would need this and the answer is simply that visitors can edit or forge cookies. This means that if we're relying on a cookie to confirm that someone is logged in as a specific user, an attacker could simply forge a cookie to trick us into thinking they're logged in. By using a secret key, we can be sure that we were the only one who could have created the cookies. But in order for this to work, you need to pick a random secret key. Don't use the one I just typed. It's only there for example purposes. Now we'll create a couple of new handlers. One will handle get requests, and it'll respond with a template containing a login form. The other will handle post requests, and it'll handle the actual form submission itself. I'll start with the get request because I think it's the easiest one. First we'll just grab the same code we used to render the index template. We're not passing any comments to it, we're just going to pass nil. And then we'll change the name of the template to login. We can go over to our template folder and then create this login.html file. Inside this template, I'm going to add a form with an input that has the name username. This is where they're going to type their username. And we'll also need a button of the submit type.
we won't worry about passwords for now. I'm going to go ahead and test this just to make sure everything's working as we have it so far. So let's open the terminal, type go run main.go, no errors here. Then we'll open the browser, go to localhost 8080 slash login, and we have our new login form. I'll do a test login, and nothing happens. But that's exactly what we expect because our handler for the login post request does nothing. Instead of doing nothing, let's have it create a new session for the visitor. The first thing we'll do is grab the username they submitted. And then we'll grab the session object. The session object has a property named values. This is where we can store session data, in this case the username. And then we need to save our session. At this point, I'm going to add a quick test handler. This handler will respond with the username from the session to make sure that our sessions are being saved correctly. First, we need to grab the session. Then we grab the username from the session.values object. Then, we make sure that the username was actually there, otherwise we'll just return. Then we do a quick type assertion, since the session.values object stores the data as empty interfaces. If all of those checks pass, then we should be able to write to our response writer a byte array of the username. And now for the moment of truth, we'll test all of this to see if our sessions are actually storing correctly. So open up the terminal, stop the server from earlier using control C, and then restart it. We don't get any errors, so again, that's a good sign. Then we can go back to our browser, and I'm going to open another tab to put this test page in. It should be empty because we have no sessions right now, but then if we go back to the login page and submit it with the username Davy, reloading this page renders the name Davy, and the only way it could do that is 
through the session object. So that means our sessions are working. Now that we have a working implementation of sessions, it would be much more useful if we actually did authentication for our users. So in the next video, I'll show you how to use password authentication to let users log in. Bye!